following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Rune Dagas. And uh, out of his mouth went a sharp two edged dagger, and his countenance was as the sun shining in his strength. Revelation chapter 1, verse 16. We are observing in this moment the previous rune, Hagal, of the Aztec calendar, which is in the very center of the calendar and that is called the Nahuiolin. Nawi means four, and Olin means movement. So it's four movement. Nawi Olin. Why are we returning to Hagal? Because Dagal and Hagal mixed. they go together as we have stated that from the rune Hagal emerges or emerge all of the runes and uh, as you observe the rune Hagal indeed is related with the word dagger which in Spanish, in Spanish is daga, very similar, daga, dagger, which is precisely that uh, knife or dagger of the Aztec calendar, which is protruding from the mouth of Tonatiu, the fifth sun, in the very center of the calendar. So that tongue, as you see, is a representation, as we have stated in other lectures, of the word, of the Logos, which is a trinity represented by the triangular tongue, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or Father, mother, son. So, the tongue, of course, <coughs> is that sharp sword, two-edged sword, which the book of Revelation talks about, and that also in the chapter 19, I believe, is where the, the knight of the white horse is also having that sword 
out of his mouth. It is very important to uh, understand this because what the book of Revelation states in Revelation 1.16 is precisely in the very center of the Aztec calendar because the fifth sun, which we in many lectures stated, uh, it relates to Samael, the fifth angel of the book of Revelation. It's also related with the fifth sun, Tonatiu, which is the sun that gives, that goes and gives the heat to this Aryan race that populates all the continents of the world. Of course, Dagat is a rune that is related with two Dorn runes. D-O-R-N, Dorn. You see the similitude? The rune Dorn is also called Thorn. Dorn or Thorn is the rune related with the thorn on the top of the head of Tonatiu. And also related with the tongue of Tonatiu. If you take both triangles and unite them, then you have the six-pointed star related with the same rune Hagal. But if we modify these two triangles and present them in different shape, we said that the triangle above, which is a thorn or thorn in the left, united by the apex of the other triangle or or uh, rune thorn from the, the tongue. So the triangle above the head and the tongue form the rune dorn, or the rune, I mean, dagal, two dorns, two thorns, in other words, form the rune dagal, two trinities. Because the trinity above the head is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the triangular tongue of Tonatiu, which is the word, is another triangular tongue, which is Father, Mother, Son. Which in the other lecture I told you is Isis, Osiris, Horus. The trinity in the world of creation. So the triangle above is the trinity in the world of archetypes, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The triangle represented by the tongue is the triangle of creation, represented by Dagas, the rune Dagas, in which you see that the triangle below relates to the triangle above. And this is what we see in the shape of the rune Dagas. And it is precisely what we see in the representation of the Pharaoh. If you see the image of the Pharaoh, you see that he is forming two Dagas runes. The one that is formed by the two arms cross over his chest and the other dagas which is formed by the scepter and the whip which is precisely pointing at the throat of the fable the throat which is related with the sephira that which means knowledge as you see it is very significant that the word in Hebrew that begins with D with Dalet which is a symbol that in ancient times 
was represented by a triangle. This is how the letter Dalet was represented. This is what the letter Delta or the Hebrew or the Greek alphabet is also represented. Delta, Dalet, Dagas, Dorn, which is a thorn, because either way or in any in any uh, alphabet, you see that that triangular uh, shape is this, uh, the form of a thorn, which the Aztec represented as a dagger coming from the mouth of the sun, Tonatiu. So, in the tongue you see an eye with eyebrows. That eye represents clairvoyance. The way in which you have to see what the word means. Because the word can hurt and is represented by the jaw or the claw. Because sometimes these jaws that are in each side of the face of Tonatiu, sometimes they say it are the jaws of a tiger or the claws of an eagle. Either way, the claws of an eagle or the jaws of a tiger symbolize the spirit. Because the tiger is a symbol of the spirit. And the eagle, likewise, in different ways. So this represents that we can hurt with our tongue. Or that we can also, by saying the truth, can hurt also the ego. As this is stated in the book of Revelation, that the knight that was riding the white horse was hurting the multitudes with his sword, meaning with his words. This is something very important. Because when we talk about the word, the language, it is very important to understand that in Spanish, for instance, tongue is called lengua. That is from Latin. In, in English, you said language in order to specify the way in which we speak. And it's because the tongue is an instrument of the word. While the organ or vehicle of the word are the lungs. As we were explaining in the previous lecture. That the lungs relate to the breath. Without the breath we cannot utter any word. So the tongue gives the form, the shape to the sounds that we emit through the larynx, to the throat. And the organ gives the substance, the air, which we stated is the father, symbol of Aleph. So when we are talking, we are putting the essence of the father, which is the air, the lungs, into our tongue. And as we stated, the tongue and all the larynx is a feminine organ. So the lungs are fecundating the larynx that with its tongue is making the Son of God, which is the Logos, the Word. This is precisely why uh, in the second uh, chapter of the book Alchemy and Kabbalah from the Master Samael on the Earth, he plays a prayer that says, Be thou, O 
had it. My secret, the Gnostic mystery of my being, the central point of my connection, my heart itself, and bloom on my fertile lips, made verb, verb or word. This supplication, of course, is telling us three points in which Hadid, which is the winged serpent of light, the Kundalini, unties three knots in our body. The first is the central point of my connection. What connection? My sexual connection, of course. Because from there, that serpent rises <clears throat> through the heart. When we find the other dagas, which is the we Pharaoh is showing us with the crossing arms. Entering to go, it says, be the secret of mystery of my being, the central point of my connection, yesod. My heart itself, tiferet. And bloom on my fertile leaves made verb that. That is a mystery of the gas in the three brains. But let us see, for instance, the Master Samael on the or teaches in his books, especially the book of astrology, that when we go to any temple of the White Lodge in the internal planes. You have to salute two guardians, the one in the right, the one in the left. Like saying, two dalets, two dagas, to form the dagas. You form the dagas, you say you cross your arms over your chest. And humbly prostrate and say, Jaquin, Boaz. Jaquin to the right, Boaz to the left. In order to enter into the temple and then the guardians open because the guardians also are making a dagath in front of anyone that comes with their swords which is a symbol of their tongue so those swords crossed in the form of an X are avoiding the steps of the one that approaches the temple so then you salute with the same rune, Dagas, and say, Jaquin Boaz. That's, that is written in the Bible, in the book of Kings. These two words, which are the secret words to enter in any temple of the White Lodge. Because the rune, Dagas, is a cycle that begins and ends. The cycle begins with the cross arms that symbolizes the will of God. That we are performing the will of God. Let us read what the Master Samael explains when he was experienced in the Mount of the Olives. In the sixth dimension, that in the tree of life relates to Tiferet, the very center of the tree of life, which is related with the heart. He says, There, as a causal man, seated with much humility, I crossed my arms over my chest in order to assist in the final ceremony. You see? That's the beginning. Unfortunately, I had the wrong custom of crossing my arms in such a way that the left arm was always over the right arm. Thou should not cross thy arms in such a way, an adept of the temple told me. Then he added, the right arm must go over the left. I obeyed his instructions. 
Have you ever seen an Egyptian sarcophagus? You see, we, we show that in the graphic, the sarcophagus of this uh, Egyptian mummy. The cross arms over the chest of the defunct illustrate these affirmations. Any skull between two cross bones or skeletal, skeletal bones, usually known as a sign of danger, also represent this affirmation. You can see the graphic of the sign of the two bones and the skull in the website. The deep significance of this symbol is to perform the will of the Father on earth as it is in heaven. To die in the Lord. Uh -huh. Meaning is a symbol of the second factor of the revolution of the consciousness. To die. Remember that the factor to be born again is related with Yesod. Because this is how we die. I mean, how we are being born within, creating the internal bodies. But the cross over the chest is a symbol of to dying in the Lord. And then he says, when the great Kabir Jesus was on the Mount of the Olives, he prayed as follows. O my Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. You see? Two wills, as we explained in the previous lecture. The will of Tifereth is one Dalet, and the other is the other Dalet, or, the, or, or two Dorn runes, which together form the rune Dagas. The rune Dagas is the union of the human will with the divine will. That is what we have to understand. And he says, And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven. That angel of him from heaven represents the first triangle. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. His own particular individual glory and Father, Son, and Holy Spirit appears from heaven. Strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was, it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow, which means with their consciousness asleep, and said unto them, Why sleep ye? Why don't you have your consciousness as asleep? What do you have, the consciousness asleep? Rise and pray. Let ye enter into temptation, because it is clear that the sleeping ones fall into temptation. That is from uh, uh, Luke 22, 42 to 46. So the consciousness, as you see, is precisely the one that has to awake. That consciousness is Tifereth, which is represented by that triangle below. Why? Because Tifereth is part of the monad, which is Hesed, Geburah, Tifereth, which is the spirit, divine soul, and human soul. That is a trinity that is working, united with the upper trinity. The upper trinity is represented by Jesus, the lower by the Bodhisattva, by the human soul. So this union is very important in order to die in the Lord. That's why In the Great Rebellion, the book written by the Master Samael on the Or, he stated, Elimination of the diverse inhuman elements which we carry within 
will be inconceivable without the radi radical elimination of the intri intrinsic causes of our psychological defects. Obviously, the causal eyes are closely related to a specific karmic debts. Only the most profound repentance and corresponding negotiations with the masters of the law can give us the joy of achieving the disintegration of all of those causal elements, which in one form or another can lead us to the final elimination of undesirable elements. The intrinsic causes of our errors can certainly be eradicated from within us thanks to the efficient works of the intimate Christ. So when we talk about annihilation of the ego, behold there the union of the human soul, which part is bottled up into the ego, and the union of the inner Lord, the inner Christ, the individual Savior. And then he added, after that, as long as the intimate Christ has not been born within us, the dissolution of the causes of the ego will not be possible. Behold here then the importance of the incarnation of the Lord, because he is the Savior. Many Gnostics think that they can eliminate the causes of the ego just by itself. It is not possible. That's why there are many confusion when related with this rune Dagas. Because it's the, the rune of cycle. The cycle. It begins with Dagas and it ends with Dagas. As I said, when you enter into a temple of the White Lodge, before entering, you make the rune and salute Joaquin Boas and then you enter because the guardians are opening the dagas that are forming with their swords in order for you to enter. Once in the temple, you do what you have to do. And when you leave, you have to thank. And in order to thank the help that you receive, you always cross your arms over your chest. This is done Unconsciously, in many religions, people, in order to talk to God, they cross their arms over their chest and concentrate in their heart and talk to God. But that symbol is death. That we have to die. And of course, because the beginning, as we say in, the, you see, the three factors of the revolution of the consciousness, is dagas which is the cross arms over Yesod, over the sex. But when you have your arms over your chest, that's the end. Means annihilation of the ego. Because when you reach the second birth in Tifereth, when you incarnate your human soul, then you have the duty of annihilating the ego completely. And in that state the dagas in your heart you incarnate the Lord because it's Tifereth the one that incarnates the Lord when Tifereth incarnates the Lord which is the word which is the logos he receives the name of the son of man so this is a beautiful mixture that you have to understand in order to comprehend this doctrine because the gas is related with Alpha and Omega. Remember that the Lord says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. And that's related to the rune Dagas. You begin with the gas and you end with the gas in your heart. Because when you want to do this work, 
that you have to do, or what we have to do, remember, it's God the one that is doing it through you. Because you think like other initiates, that they, they can do the work with their own will, without taking in an account the will of God, they are wrong. Because the gods show us the two wills, the two thorns united. Which also represents the two wills, the female and the male wills, sexually united. In order to be born again and in order to die. Without the incarnation of the Lord, it's impossible to annihilate the causes of the ego. The initiate in the beginning comprehends the ego, annihilate that by asking his divine mother. His hadith, the annihilation of that ego that he comprehends. But later on in the work, if he wants to go into the very causes of those egos, the origin of those egos, in order to have true repentance, he has to incarnate the Lord in Tiferet. Because only the Lord can negotiate. Your karma. And this is precisely what Dagas is showing us. We have to be humble. In order for the negotiations to be performed. But who is the one that is doing those negotiations with the law? Which, between parentheses, the heart, Tifereth, the center of the tree of life. Is symbolized by the sun. S-U-N. The sun. The sun is the center. Of the solar system. And relates to the law of karma. So only the Lord. Can negotiate your karma. Only the Lord can. Save you. And that's precisely the symbol. Of the two arms over your chest. Repentance. True repentance is only possible when you incarnate the Lord. When the Lord suffers in the causal world. Negotiating your own karma. Because he is mixed, mingled with you, with the human soul. And that is called the son of man. So he goes into the tribunals and wants the annihilation of certain egos. And then the laws of karma give the okay or not. He said, no, you have to suffer. And after that suffering, you have to annihilate that. Before that, you cannot. And this is something that many Gnostics do not understand. But the Master explains that very clear. Certain egos have strong karmas. And you have to negotiate that. When he said you, I mean you, human soul, has to do it. But united with the Lord, because only the Lord incarnated within you can, can do such negotiations. <coughs> then, the initial has to suffer in the physical world the consequences of those negotiations. And sometimes those negotiations have nothing to do with the common and ordinary life of any Gnostic sometimes contradict the rules written in many books and that's why the Master Samael says the initiates that ignore this attack the Lord with the same words written by the Lord And it is because they ignore that the Lord is suffering within that initiate that has to suffer that karma. But the Lord is also there, mingled with, with him. And that's a mixture that we have to understand called the Son of Man. And many initiates do not understand that because in order to understand that you have to reach the level of Tifereth and taking the direct path and incarnating the Lord. 
Because one thing is to reach Tifereth, mastery, and you can go in the spiral. And another thing is to reach Tifereth and take the direct path. And one thing is to take the direct path, and another is to incarnate the Lord. Because the initiate is tested after taking the direct path. Tested by the Lord. And if he passed the test, the Lord incarnates in him. In order to help him to annihilate the causal egos, the very root of his own ego. So, to be anointed by the Lord is the, the great hope of any initiate. But for that, of course, you have to advance five initiations. Remember that the book of Revelation states, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. Or we will say it, the beginning of life and the ending of life, which is death. Symbolized by the two bones cross below the skull. The same symbol of Dagas symbolizes death. When you reach the death of, the, of your ego, then you are self-realized. The symbol is precisely that two bones cross in an X and the skull above. And of course, that's the cycle that Dagas is telling us. And Dagas is a symbol that is written in the book of Genesis. It says in the very simple words, and the evening and the morning was the first Dagas, which also the room uh, that symbolizes day. Dagas, and see the day, dia in Spanish, begins with Dagas. Every cycle, the first initiation of major mysteries is the first cycle of evening and morning. There are seven cycles written in the book of Genesis that says, and the evening and the morning, the second day, and the evening and the morning, the third day, and likewise, all the seven days. Who is the evening? Is a woman. Who is the day or the morning? Is a man. Because between the two, they form. You might say, and why the woman is the evening? Because she has the womb in which, in darkness, she creates life. The fetus within the womb is in darkness. Nine months. So the woman is always the night, and the man is always the day. That's why in Kabbalah, Tifereth, which is the sunrise, represents the man. In Malkut, which is the west, represents the woman. So in between the two Dalets, between the, the two Dagas, you see how it works always. Mm -hmm. And it's shown, as I said, in the Bible in many ways. For instance, uh, we show you the form in which you have to perform the microcosmic star but let me tell you before you start the microcosmic start you have to cross your arms over your chest and ask for protection to your inner being in order for your inner being to give you the energy the strength the power in order for that star to protect you 
And then you descend your arms next to your body and start doing the microcosmic star, which ends with the rune dagas as well, because that's the complete cycle, the beginning and the ending. Don't forget that. Because if you miss that, then you deviate from the path. Because the will of God is the beginning, and the will of God is the end. Because it's God the one that creates, it's God the one that annihilates the ego. Do not forget that. You perform the work of sexual magic, the spouses. But the one that is rising the energy from the bottom to the top is God, the Ruach Elohim. And then when you are twice born, you have to annihilate completely your ego, if you take the direct path. Because you take the spiral, you go into the path of the Hanasmusen. Those who annihilate the ego little by little. But the path of the Son of Man incarnates the Lord and reaches complete death in the second mountain. And then he performed the sacrifice for humanity, which is another X, another Dagas of the day. Because in order to be a master of the day, you have to work with this marvelous rune, Dagas. Well, when you imagine that tongue, which is that dagger, that daga in Spanish, dagas, the sword of Samael, which is the word, you have to comprehend that whosoever knows, the war gives power to no one has uttered it. No one will utter it, but only the one that has the word incarnated. So to incarnate the word is necessary in the path. And that relates with Dagas, which as you see, relate with that. The mystery of that, the mystery of the throat, the mystery of the Divine Mother. In the book of uh, Revelation, when you want to see how the word John is written, you find that the word is written Johannes. Johannes. With two ends. And that's why the, the Master Samael on the or stated in his Logos Mantra Turgy that the word Johannes is break down into i ye o u a m s the seven vowels which are represented by seven runes the rune is the rune 
Eichwas, the rune Torn, the rune Ur, the rune Ar, the rune Man, and the Sich at the end. You can find and see the graphic how the seven Bibles of Johannes are represented in the seven runes, which relate to the seven vowels of the word that you had to pronounce. We say these seven are seven vowels. What are vowels? Are perfect tones in which the throat is open. It's not tight. You say it easily. E, E, O, U, A, M, S. And I told you in the previous lecture that the H is also a vowel. But if you are observant, you will see that the H is behind all the vowels. In English, in order to show the sound of a letter individually, you place the H in the front of that letter. For instance, the letter I, if you put the H, how do you sound? E. This is how I learned. If you put the H in front of the letter E, and then the sound is E. The sound of the, the, rain, and the letter O, O, U. If you put that H in front of the letter A, and then the sound is A. Ah. That is indicating the H, you see, the Rung Hagal. That is just a simple <coughs> breath. Hmm? A simple exhalation of the vitality of your lungs. E, E, O, U, A. So place that at the beginning of the first five vowels. The M is not necessary. This is a M. S. And of course, that's related with the word Johannes. <coughs> Greek and also Latin. In German, they also said Johannes instead of John. In John, in English, you only find uh, four letters that come from, 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 from German or from the Latin, even from the Hebrew. Because in Hebrew, you say, Yohanan. This is how you say in Hebrew, Yohanan, with two N's. It's very significant, very profound. Because all of those sounds are coming from the throat. The perfect tones of the word of God. Simple. Of course, in ancient times there were more vowels. But in this time we only teach seven related with the word John. Because John is the one that represents the word we always quote the first verses of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This is the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life is the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent by God, whose name was Johannes, Johanan, John, the Word. You see, simple as that. Just pronounced like that. The other letters, consonants, are noises. 
that are pronounced with the tongue are not perfect. The whole vowels are perfect sounds, but the consonants are imperfect sounds that need the assistance or the help of a vowel in order to make sense. You said, for instance, B, the letter B, right? If you observe your tongue, you will see that when you pronounce any consonant, you have to unite it with a vowel in order to make sense. In any language, the word language comes from lengua, tongue. Means the way in which you move the tongue in different ways. That's why when you investigate the origin of the languages, or the origin of the different tongues, we will say in other words, it is the way in which you pronounce the word according to your race, according to the language that you speak. Different languages, different ways in which you move your tongue. For instance, we always go into the ancient languages like Latin, Greek, Sanskrit, Chinese, even here in the America, you find the Nagua, the Maya, different languages that come from the same root. The Watan, the language of the Atlanteans, but that root comes also from another language, which is the golden language. When we talk about the golden language, we are talking only one language. That language that was spoken in the beginning and that ancient people were uttering, that language was related with the forces of nature. But we lost it because of fornication. Because the throat is related with the sexual glands. It is easy to see that when the man is reaching maturity, his voice changes because he is making sperms in his testicles. And the woman also is changing his voice because of the sexual force of her ovaries. So the sexual organs are related to the throat because both are two H's. When I said H's, I'm relating to the, the, the letter H, not to the word H, which you always use in order to qualify 30 years old age or 50 years old age, you know. The H, the letter. So one H is in the sexual organs and another H is in the throat. Two feminine organs. So behold there the relation of the sexual energy with the throat. So when we fornicate it, or when this humanity fornicated in the Lemurian times, little by little they were losing the power of the golden language that was spoken in relation with nature. That language is still spoken by the angels and by other people of other planets. But there are many derivations from that language in precisely in this planet, we find a lot. And that's why when you, or when we give lectures, we always associate this word or this knowledge with this word of the Sanskrit or with this word of the Latin or the Greek or the Mayans, because all of them are related. All of them come from the same root. Now, for instance, because we are talking about the Nordic alphabet, the Nordics are related, of course, with the Nords. The European root race. There we find a language which is very similar to Hebrew in their intonation, which is the German. In Europe, really, the German language has its roots in the runes. That's why when in the 
fifth route race in the time of the Germans in the Second World War, they were studying the root of their own language, they found the runes. And yes, it is related, but not only the German language, also the Hebrew language, the Greek language, the Latin language, and many languages in America are related to the runes, to the forces of nature, to the ancient alphabet, the runic alphabet that was written in previous root races, very ancient. And as we said, Hebrew, Latin, many other languages derive from that, even alphabets. This is what we have to understand. That's why when we name this, usually people associate the runic language with the Germans. And it is because in the fifth root race, in the Second World War, they were taking the runic alphabet in order to show them. And because they found the, the, the root in that language, in that alphabet. We the Gnostics know that, but we also investigate and know that in America, Mexico, Mayas, in the Incas, you find also the runes and are more ancient than the runes that you find in Europe. And it is because Mexico and Central America belonged to Lemuria before Lemuria sank. And when Atlantis emerged from the Atlantic Ocean, Mexico and Central America became part of Atlantis. When the Atlantic, uh, Atlantis civilization sank in the ocean, in the Atlantic Ocean, it's still Mexico and Central America is there. So that's why we state those runes are very ancient in relation with the runes of America. Some of them belong to the Atlanteans and other to the Lemurians. And that's why studying this alphabet, especially the rune Dagas, you find how the word that knowledge is related with it. And from there, for instance, this rune, which is related with the letter E, whose sound is A, is called Ewas. Ewas. This is how it's called. Sometimes they call it rune Aif or Ewas. Sometimes this rune is presented without the vertical line, just like that. Similar to the rune Sikh, but different. We present it here with a vertical line crossing it in order to represent the letter E, the modification of it. A was. It is stated that relates to the throat because the sound E is in the throat. And this is precisely very important because Dagas is in relation with Dalet, with Da'at, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, among the runes, this rune is called also the U rune. Why? E W U rune. Many wonder why is this called like that, and says that it's related to the U tree. Do you know the U tree? It is a tree that has always uh, red berries, similar to uh, cypress, I believe. There are many variations of the. U uh, tree, and sometimes they put it as a symbol of Christmas tree. It's also called the Yggdrasil tree, related with the Edda. The U tree is the Yggdrasil. But why is called U? Well, in many lectures we uh, taught that the word of God 
is precisely you. We explain that your hey, bar, hey, when we talk about the vowel of God, the word of God, this is that the word of God is the holy name of God pronounced very well with perfect tone. So listen to this. Pay attention. We said that the vowels are perfect tones and the consonants are noises. So in order to name God, you have to name it with vowels. So you said, for instance, Yod Chava, you are pronouncing there some consonants. But if you take those four letters of Yod He Bab He and understand that the letter He is written with the letter H and the letter A or He and Aleph, in order to name the word He, you understand why in the Hebrew language, sometimes instead of putting the letter Aleph, they place the letter He and they pronounce it A ah, at the end of the word or in the middle of the word. So the letter H or the letter He, in other words, is always substituting the vowel or the sound, the tone, ah. Why the first letter of the holy name of God, which is Yod, have the sound I? Just that, that, I. I, ah. But in Hebrew, you want to write or give the sound of the, of the letter O, or U, you just put the letter Vav. In these times, in this day and age, they write the letter Vav like this, of Yod He Vav He. And if you want to say O, oh, you put a dot above. That's O. Oh. But you want to say E with the letter Vav, you put it below. That's E in the, in the word. But if you want to say U, with the letter Vav, you put it in his belly. You see? In the belly. Ooh. So with the letter Vav, if you read a word, you can read O, I, or U. That's why the word Ye, U is showing the letter Vav here. And the letter I is the letter H also. This is Yod He Bav, in other words. That's why Diodorus Siculus said that the holy name of God that Moses taught to the Israelites was E A O. Three vowels. E A O. Which in the other lecture I told you it could be also E E U. Three vowels too. E E U. It depends how you, how, how you read it. Because if you want to write Yehu or you in Hebrew, you have to use the, the three uh, letters, yod he bav of the holy name. That's why it is stated that the holy name of God is Iao or Yehu. And that's why they call it the U letter, the letter Awas, the U letter. Related with the yew tree. And says, why the yew tree? Hmm? I understand that it is yod he bav, ye u, the yew tree. What is that? Oh, the sound e, which is also associated with e was, is related with my throat. And in my throat, I have that, which is the tree of good and evil. In other words, is pointing at our own throat. The way in which we use the word for good or for evil. Because with your tongue, you can bless 
or you can utter a damnation. Hmm? So behold there, good and evil, the yew tree or the Yggdrasil, which is the same one the, in the Wagner's opera. That's the yew tree related with the Ewas. Many people in the ancient times also, I mean, a few years ago, in the Second World War, they were associating this as this, this is the rune of the Jews. Of course, related with the, the Jews, the, the Israelites. Because in order to write Jew, also you write with yod he Bab, the Jew. And you always associate that. This is the tree of good and evil. The person that sometimes is good, sometimes could be evil. It depends how you use it. So it's associated, of course, with the rune dagats. And if you see, of course, whether what we cross there, the X, the two dalets of dagats. So that is the mystery of the U tree. The Yggdrasil related with the A was. The letter E or the rune related with the throat. Which is the one that we are approaching. The tree of good and evil. So you realize that? That the tree of good and evil, we told you in many lectures, is a sexual force. And people think, oh, the tree of good and evil, the sexual force in Yasod. So if I don't fornicate, then I am doing good, no evil. But they forget about the throat. Because the throat is also a sexual organ. When you create words, you can kill with your word. It comes into my mind now in the time of Julius Caesar, when he says that he was assassinated by the dagger of Brutus. Now, in this day and age, the Master Samael says that Brutus came to his life again. Thank goodness he was not assassinated physically. But the dagger, which is the tongue, hurt also his knowledge. Because the traitors use the tongue in order to hurt. If you go onto the internet, you find a lot of people using the word, using the letters in order to attack Gnosis. Or using the letters, using the words, in order to adulterate the doctrine of the one that has two uh, H's, whose tongue is a sharp two H's, dagger. That is the knowledge. Let us see, for instance, here, when you read a book, you read the letters written, which are forms derived from the runes, whether it is Latin uh, letters or Hebrew letters or Greek letters. And this is how you are receiving the knowledge. But between the letter that is written and the word that is uttered, is something in between, is the ensis, the essence, the spirit, which is the air, which is always hidden behind the letter. You have to know and to enter into the meaning of the letter. That's why we said it is important to study the letters, the origin of the word, in order to go to the spirit which is hidden without, behind the, the sign of the letter. Whether it is Hebrew, whether it is Latin. So every book written by the Master Samael on the Or is something behind that 
that we have to go, even though it's unveiled and spoken very clear. There's something behind that you have to know how to go. Because he's talking to the essence. The same books in the Bible or in any holy book. If you read literally, you lose the spirit that vivifies the word. And it's unfortunately, this is what happens in this day and age. You read and you are lazy. You read the books, sacred books, and the message of the Master Samael, like when you read it in a newspaper. And that's wrong. Because the messages written in the books of the Master Samael on the or have a message for the spirit, for the consciousness. And only in meditation is how you extract that. That is hidden there. Like why is in the Bible or in the Quran? Unfortunately, in this day and age, lazy people do not know how to read. But you have to learn how to read. Remember that it depends how I said things. Behind that, those words that I am pronouncing, behind that is my breath, which is Aleph, which is the power of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in my body. So these words have to go. But if I utilize my tongue in the wrong way, I can even kill with my words by giving a wrong advice. Many people that kill the intentions of the searches of light when teaching wrong things. That is very difficult. A lot, a very strong responsibility to teach. Because you have to give to the consciousness the right tools. But if you want just to bust up yourself and say things that are wrong just because you want people to follow you, you are using the word of God in the wrong way. That word is the son, remember. Father, mother. Father, the essence, the lungs. That is the organ or the instrument which is used by air in order to make sounds. Mm -hmm. So the lungs are the father. The tongue is the mother. And what you utter are your children, the son. That's why they say the children of Israel are the ones that come from the word of God. I know the people that live in the Middle East and are using the tongue in their own way. In order to you to become a child of Israel, you have to know that Israel is the heart. It's different. So you said, I am a child of Israel. You are saying, I am a master of the fifth initiation of mere mysteries. Because Israel is in the heart. It's Jacob. Related with the three patriarchs. Abraham is Hesed. Isaac is Geburah. And Tifereth, the heart, is Jacob, Israel. You reach that level. You finish that cycle of to be born again. Then you are a child of of Israel, a children of Israel are the masters. But in this age, people that don't know how to read, that are not in Egypt, they think that the children of Israel are in the Middle East. And they are not masters. Moses, David, Zachariah, Ezekiel, those are children of Israel. But fornicators, people that fornicate like beasts, are not children of Israel. You, you have to understand that when you use your understanding, your comprehension of Dagas. That's why the ancient pharaohs, they were children of Israel because they were masters. Self-realized masters. When you become a child of Israel, then you have to travel all the wilderness in order to enter into the Holy Land, which is a transformation. 
So, for that, we had to incarnate the word in the heart. And that's the mystery of Dagas. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, from the 7 to 11 verses, he says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierce him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so amen. So the clouds, of course, symbolize the mystery that is hidden when you read. Those clouds are the letters from where the word, the, the, the wisdom is hidden. And that's why the word, which is the Lord says, I am Alpha and Omega, or Omega. The beginning and the ending, says the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Only those verses are hidden a lot of things within you. That Lord has to come to you. When you know that the Alpha and the Omega are precisely related to the pentagram, which is the, create, the, the word made flesh. I, Johannes, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. You see, for the word of God. I was in the spirit on the Lord days. Dagas. That is the day of the Lord. Because when it says in the Lord's day, meaning in the cycle. In which cycle are we? Of course, when we are starting this path, we are not in Tiferet. We're just beginners. So we have to prepare ourselves in order to the word to incarnate in us. But the word is related with Johannes, with John, with Yehuams, which relate to the seven churches. Because the Lord says, and I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And when thou seest, write in a book. That book is you. That book is our selves. And send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. Asia. The world of action. The world of matter. Your physical body. That is your spinal column. Unto Ephesus. The chakra. Muladara. And to Smyrna. The chakra. Shwaristana. And to Pergamos, the chakra uh, Manipura. And to Tiatira, the chakra Anahata. And to Sardis, the chakra Vishuddha. And to Philadelphia, the chakra Achna. And to Laodicea, the chakra Sahasrara. Seven magnetic centers that vibrate with the seven vowels. E, E, O, U, A, M, M, S. So that is Yohanan. In other words, in this very moment, we become a disciple of the Lord. So we have to put in activity the seven vowels in order for the Lord to come to us. To prepare the temple for, for the Lord. For the word. And that's why we had to learn how to vocalize. That's why the Master, Master Samael on Vior gave us many mantras. In order for us to vocalize. To put in activity the chakras. Related with the seven vowels. So we awake. So the essence can see. And study the meaning of the word. Because the eye 
in the tongue of Donatiu means clairvoyance. But that clairvoyance has to be united with clairaudience, with telepathy, with intuition. When you read any book of the Bible, of any sacred book, you have to use your seven chakras because it's the word. Yohanan has to understand that. Remember that the two ends of Johannes or Yohanan are the two noons which form the fish. If you observe the tongue of Tonatiu, it has the shape of a fish. And that fish is, in Hebrew, dog. You see? This is how you said fish in Hebrew. Dog. Dogas. Same root. And when we talk about Johannes, we remember Johannes, Johannes, the man fish. In the Bible, in the ancient text, in the Old Testament, they talk about Dagong, the one that were worshipped worshipped by the Philistines, the sexual force of the fish, Dagong. Many people said, "Oh, Dagong is, is evil. Johannes is evil because the fish." No. Jesus is represented by ictus, by the fish. Because he is the word, the same tongue that comes from your mouth has a shape of a fish. The dagger, the fish. Ictus, dog, dagon, Johannes, the word. But it depends how you, if you are a Philistine, you are using the power of dagon, you see, through your throat in the wrong way. You are worshipping Dalila, the night. And what of you, if you are a Samson, a Samson of Kabbalah, and you allow Delilah to seduce you? Because then you turn from the real fish, which is Ictus, the Lord, into Dagon. Means the strength of the fish, of the sperm, through fornication. The symbol of Samson and Delilah and Dagon. But Dag is fish. And when you are working with the word, you have to work with dag, with ictus, with the noon of Yohanan in Hebrew. has two noons at the end, Yohanan. These two noons are the sperm and the ovum, which are the support of the word E-O. And you see, we talked to you about the letter het, which in English is ch. This is something very important now, because when you see the ch as a mantra, don't pronounce that mantra as cha or chi, because ch comes from the Hebrew language, which is the letter het. So ch a is ha. Not cha, because sometimes you read it in your language, native language. But remember, the Master Samael says the letter ch is associated with the Hebrew mantras. But the ch is the letter het, because there is no ch sound in Hebrew. Cha, no. Only ch, right? And it's pronounced with the throat. So you behold that when you pronounce the mantra. Because when you say ha, you are pronouncing the H and, and the A, which is very common, as I said. And also, not only in Hebrew, but also in German. That, that sound here, which in Spanish or English is not very common. Other languages in Asia, they pronounce that very strong. And the word Yohanan is with het, of life. Remember that the throat gives life. But when it's not pronounced in a strong way like and it's not het but hey, which is just a, as a breath. Like for instance, 
how are you? You see the sounds, the sound of the H is very soft. Like a breath, like a sigh. So both letters, as I said in the previous lecture, have similar sounds. The H is like a sigh. But head is very strong. Chava is Eve, which means the mother of the living. For instance, let's see another similitude here. Het, Yod, Tav are the letters that spell Het in Hebrew. The letter Het. You want to spell Het? It's letter Het, letter Yod, letter Tav. Het. But if you take that, because in the ancient Hebrew, you didn't write with vowels or with symbols. So you can say chayot. Same. Het, yot, tav. Chayot. And what is chayot? Is animals. Sometimes creatures with life. Haya, life. Chayot, with the same spelling. And that's precisely the problem with translators. In ancient times, the Hebrew language didn't show any dot, any line, in order to show how to pronounce the vowels. It was written just like that. And if it says letter het, they said, oh, it says hayot, hayot. And maybe they were saying hayot, and also it's, it's letter het, you know. So this is precisely the... Uh, when you translate, when you read something in Hebrew, you take the word and then you disclose it with the sound and use your intuition and only to see the spirit that vivifies behind the letter and only to understand what is what this prophet is saying. But you can use, I said, the same sounds in the wrong way. Now, in order to work with it, in order to activate those chakras and to do what we are teaching here, you have to vocalize every day e e o u a m s by doing the runic alphabet. You perform the shape of the eye with your body, and then you pronounce e. Then you perform the sign of the A sound with your body, and then you pronounce the sound A. But you have to concentrate precisely in the place where the vowel belongs. E belongs to the pituitary and to the pineal gland. That's why you have to raise your arms up in order to make a straight line, in order to pronounce E. E. When you want to pronounce the A, remember that A was is letter with the throat. So you have to make the straight line, horizontal line of the letter A was, and to break your arms. You break it in your elbow, of course. The left, up, and the right, down. That is A. And when you pronounce it, A. You are feeling the vibration in the throat. Then you form the letter O with the rune thorn, which is the O. Concentrate in your heart. O. Then you make the shape of the U, of the rune Ur with your body down. Concentrate in your belly and you pronounce U. Then you make the shape of the letter, or better said, the rune R, just by opening your right arm, I mean the right uh, leg, just like that, with your arms together, close to your body. Concentration in the middle of the lungs, the thymus gland, and you pronounce ah. The sound of nature, the forces of nature will come to you and activate the chakra thanks to the shape of the room that you are doing with your body. Then you raise your arms like a supplication to heaven, making the letter Y with your body. 
The letter Y is the root man. And then you concentrate in your prostate or uterus and pronounce the letter Then you go down and your tiptoes, in your tiptoes, -to you crunch your body, put your hands over your knees, and form the shape of the rune C with your body. If you see your body, all the spinal column is doing one line, and then the femurs, your legs, are forming the other line, and then the calves are forming the last line. Because there are three lines of the letter Sikh, or the run Sikh. And if you pronounce this rune makes the sexual force from the coccyx rise to the top. And then you stretch again. And you said, e There has to be a rhythmic movement with the seven vowels. Let's see how this uh, instructor will come right now and to do the shapes and to show you how. I'm going to pronounce the vowels for you and to indicate how is she going to do it. First, of course, you begin with the rune dagas. You cross your arms over your chest and ask, you, ask your inner being, my father, my God, mother of my divine goddess, help me to activate my seven bowels so that Johannes, the word of God, will prepare my body for the advent of the word, Jesus, on my heart. Then, after that, you begin and pronounce E by elevating your arms, making a straight line. E. Then you put it down and form the letter A, the rune A was. E. And then you make the rune thorn, open your legs and your arms united with your hands above. Oh. Then you go down and form the letter U, the shape of the letter of the rune Uber. And then you open your leg. Ah. With your straight body, of course. You, first you straight your body, and then you open your legs with ah. And then you raise your arms with mm, in supplication with the letter M, the sound M. And then you go down. With the letter S of the rune Sikh. And of course, you can continue doing that, but you finish always with the rune dagas. You cross your arm over your chest when you finish and give thanks to your inner God. Because he is the one that attracts the forces and put in activation your chakras. We advise to do EO wams seven times. So of course, after you are doing the S when you are crunching your, your body like that, you straight your arm again and go. E yeah. oh. ah. mm. He has a rhythm. And this is how you you, which is the letter U, perform the seven vowels. As I said, do it in that way 
by making the form with your body of the of the runes every day seven times if you want to do it 14 times good too but remember that you are attracting the forces of nature in your body the forces of nature are in nature are in your body, in your Divine Mother Kundalini. Remember that. In the man, of course, thy Divine Mother Kundalini is represented in his wife. Not in some other states. When you perform the sexual act, visualize that the Mother Kundalini is reflected in your wife. The wife has to see that the Holy Spirit is reflected in her, in, in her husband. Christianity talks about the three Marys. Mary in the cosmos, Mary in nature, and Mother and Mary in your own body. The three Marys. But the Mary in your own body, of course, relates with your divine mother, but also in the man, when we talk about the man, is in relation with his spouse. As Mary Magdalene. For instance, the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verse 26, 27 says, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, his mother Kundalini, of course. What is the cross of Jesus? Dagas is the cross of Jesus. No matter where you place it, in your yesod, sexual organs, in your heart, or in your throat. That is the cross of Jesus. The two polarities, the two wheels. Mm -hmm. So, at the foot of the cross is always Mary. Mm -hmm. The Divine Mother, the sexual force, the feminine aspect of the Holy Spirit. And his mother sister, which is Mary, mother, the wife of Cleophas, which means vision of glory. When you start annihilating your ego, then you enter more in contact with your mother. And you start having experiences with mother nature. Mother nature is a being that exists in the fourth dimension. It's a force, it's an intelligence. Mother nature is being destroyed by the inhabitants of the earth in this day and age. But the ancient the Gnostic worships Mother Nature. That the sister of Mary, the Mother Kundalini of us. And the other Mary, Mary Magdalene, says this. His wife. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple, which is the Bodhisattva, Johannes, the word, standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. The word is thy son. Okay. Woman, throat. Mother, in my throat, in the heart. Behold thy son. The word is already purified. Because I am dying on the cross. And thanks that I am dying on the cross. He, the human soul, Tiferet, is being purified. Now he has no ego. He is completely dead. Then said to his disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, in that initiation, the disciple took her, took her on his own home, his own house, his own temple, his own body. It's okay now? The microphone was dropped, I'm sorry. So John, the Gospel of John is the Gospel of Johannes. So, just a minute please. This microphone.
working now? All right. <clears throat> so, Johannes is a union, is the son of man, the union of Jesus with John. John is a human soul, it's Tifereth. So when Jesus said to the human soul, Behold thy mother, meaning, now you have no ego. Because Jesus annihilated the causes of that ego in the causal world. Now behold thy mother, that now you become really a child of the Divine Mother. No matter where, in nature, individually, or in the cosmos. Those are the three Marys. But he achieved that thanks to Mary Magdalene. The two M's, that's the mystery of M.M., Mary Magdalene. Mystery among the Masons that none of them know about it. Even though they have the Mary Magdalene, they fornicate with her. To transmute, transform Mary Magdalene, M.M., into a holy creature is the way. So thanks to Mary Magdalene, the Divine Mother, is now with Johannes. The son of man. It's a perfect. There's the meaning of that. This is the verse that you read and that you see there in the chapter 19. And that's why when the Master Jesus resurrects, that disciple is there. But it's another symbol when he is walking with Peter. And, Pete, and asking to Peter, Peter, do you love me? And he said, yes, Lord, I love you. Take care of my ship. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Take care of the soul of my people. Teach them. And ask a third time. Peter, do you love me? And he said, my Lord, you know that I love you. Why are you bothering me with this word? But this is the meaning because the initiate in the beginning has to work with Peter. Peter has... He's showing us the way of the transmutation of the sexual force. Hmm? And of course, Peter says, Master, and what about this disciple, this man behind us? And behind them is Johannes, Johanan, John. And Master Jesus says, If I want that he wait for me until I come, what is that to you? You just follow me. Hmm? That saying means that you have to work very hard first and to be born again. And if you reach mastery, he is waiting for me. That word. What is that to you? You just keep working. When you reach that level, and then he will be united with me, and then we will come with you. That is the meaning of it. Do you have questions? Yes. Um, the woman is on her cycle. Is she the If the woman is in her cycle, can she perform the runes? It's better if she doesn't. Because when you're doing these movements, you are transmuting the forces of nature in your body. And the body of a woman is rejecting the toxins, rejecting the negative forces during her cycle. And learning to clean. That's precisely the body of the woman. It goes with nature. So if the woman does the runes. And is starting transmuting the toxins that she is releasing. Naturally she is absorbing it again. And that's no good. The best what, that the woman can do. Is to vocalize the, the vowels mentally. And be quiet. In order for the Lord to act those chakras. From above to below. And those forces will also help to reject the toxins and everything that the woman is rejecting when is menstruating. Otherwise, if she does it in this way, because in this way we are taking the forces from nature into our body and rising it. And then we'll mix it with the toxins that she is releasing when he is in, in her menstruation and it's not good. So my advice is to vocalize mentally or to meditate during that period. Another question? Yeah, the question is, which leg is going to the side for the room corresponding to the vowel A? 
Which what? The vowel A, the A ah sound, the right. The right is always opening. Another question? Yeah. Where online or what book can we find illustrations showing all of the positions for E, A, O, E, A? There is no book, there is no way to find that. The Master Zamael wrote about certain runes, not all of them. And about Dagas, he just mentioned it without saying Dagas. Hmm? But it's obvious that he knew about the mystery of Dagas, which is the mystery of cycle, which is written in many books. In the evening and the morning was the first day. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the cycle of life and death. That's the cycle of Dagas, the beginning and ending of any initiation. And of course, he taught about that in all of his books without saying this is related to Dagas. But now that we are teaching here about the runes, we are teaching this is related with Dagas because the simple symbol of Dagas is precisely crossing your arms over your chest. That's a simple symbol, which is to do the will of God, to die in the Lord. That's why when we were observing certain Gnostics, that they don't end the microcosmic star in their heart. It says, and they teach about psychological death. How is that? That they teach that and don't do their, their real death according to the Lord. And it's because they ignore about the Lord. Just by teaching this is how you have to understand. So... Uh, we probably will make another video related with the seven vowels and I'm going to illustrate for you. This I learned when I was with the Master Samael on the or in Mexico. I learned it in Mexico. I am teaching it now and of course uh, I never found any written about it. But there are many things that the Master Samael taught and that are not written. But since we are in the time of the end and you need this, I'm teaching you, so practice it in order to activate that and to take advantage of it. The Master Samael advises the vocalization of the seven vowels in many of his books. So, yes? When is the best time to do the runes? The best time to do the runes? In the morning, when the body is rested. Because in the morning, you find that the forces of nature, the sun, left the solar light in nature. So you take advantage of that moment and do the runes. Then you take all the energy in your vital body. Remember that Dagas, Da'at, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, is related with the seven vowels. That you have to activate the seven churches of Asia. Yes? No, it's not a coincidence, because the yew tree is precisely closes uh, many symbols. And uh, <coughs> remember that the two branches of the yew tree is the vertical and the horizontal. They make the cross. So if we say that Jesus, the Christ, died on the cross of two yew branches, or two branches of the tree yew, that's precisely the meaning, you know what I mean? The tree of good and evil. Because that tree of good and evil is the man and the woman. Dagas. But we have to go beyond the woman and the man. We have to go beyond good and evil. Like the gods. And by that we have to die on the cross of the yew tree. The two branches. Symbolically. This is how we have to state the tree of wood and evil is a cross in which the Lord work. 
performing all of his miracles within the human being. Do you have another question? Yes? Can you explain more about the symbol of the whip and the hook that's on the uh, mummy? Oh, in the, the hook? You mean the scepter? The scepter of the, of the Pharaoh. In the image of the Pharaoh, you see uh, the scepter in the left and the whip in the right. Well, there's other two symbols. The initial has to work with the two wheels. With the whip and the scepter. The right and the left, the two forces. The whip, of course, is more the uh, usual used as a symbol of willpower. But also the scepter is also willpower, the benevolent willpower. Where the whip is the one that executes justice, karma. So this is how you have to work with the two forces of the gas, always. The duality. And of course, above uh, the head of this pharaoh, you also see the duality. You find the serpent, Harit, that works with the vulture, the vulture of death. In order to achieve the self-realization of the being. The question? For the mother Mary, you said she is, she is the cosmic mother. Is she Pistis Sophia? Mother Mary, if she the Pistis Sophia. Well, Pistis Sophia is united with, uh, with the Divine Mother, of course. Pistis is power. Pistis is intellect, intellectia, intle intellect, intelligence. It's the Holy Spirit, the power of the fire. And Sophia is wisdom, which is the uh, Chokhmah, the Christ. P.C. Sophia cannot be P.C. Sophia without the Divine Mother Kundalini. P.C. Sophia has the Divine Mother Kundalini in seven serpents. P.C. Sophia is the human soul united with Sophia. It's Johanan and Jesus together. But remember, don't forget that the Gospel of Luke, the Gospel of the Earth, states, first is the birth of Yohanan, the Baptist, and then the birth of Jesus after that, six months later. This is very significant. First work with Yohanan. When you reach that level, then Jesus comes six months after. The mystery of the sixth mystery is the sixth arcana, arcanum. No more questions? Let us pronounce with our tongue Amen Aom to finish this lecture. Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Amen.